Live from Bloomer's World Headquarters in New York City, I'm Matt Miller. And from our studios in Washington, D.C., I'm Kaylee Lines. Welcome to Bloomberg Crypto, a look at the people, transactions, and technology shaping the world of decentralized finance. Coming up, we'll speak to billionaire investor Tim Draper. We'll discuss regulation, VC funding for crypto companies, and his call on the price of Bitcoin to hit $250,000. He's now pushing that out to 2025. And Gemini Trust, the digital asset exchange founded by the Winklevoss twins, sues DCG, alleging fraud and deception after a failed lending venture between the two firms. Plus, prosecutors charge a man for stealing two Bored Apes NFTs by creating a fake replica of OpenSea, the digital marketplace. All right, so we have a lot to cover. All of that is ahead. But first, let's get a snapshot of the digital asset markets. The best way to do that on your Bloomberg terminal, CRYP Go. It shows you pricing across the board. And what we do see is that there is a little bit uh, of a difference between what is happening with some of the major tokens uh, and others. Bitcoin on the day is down by right around half of 1%. We still remain above that $30,000 level. Right now, trading at $30,646. Of course, uh, trying to maintain that those gains that it seen since BlackRock first filed uh, for its ETF just about one month ago. That spot ETF, a lot of optimism about that potentially being the first one that could be approved by U.S. regulators. We'll see uh, if all of that optimism is actually validated at some point. Ether, on the other hand, down a little bit more, about 1%, 1871, where we trade there, where some real underperformance is coming through today is in Binance Coin. It's down about 4.5%. Uh, to 18.6 where we trade. And then outperformance uh, coming from Solana. And this is not just a today story. Today, yes, that is true. It's up uh, about 3% trading at $22, Matt. But it actually has been outperforming uh, since that ETF filing uh, I was talking about. Since June 16th, or 14th, rather, the day before uh, BlackRock filed that, it has rallied more than 50%. Bitcoin, on the other hand, is only up about 22% over that same time period. All right, very interesting moves there, Kaylee. Now, Standard Chartered is ramping up its bullish Bitcoin predictions, targeting as much as 120000 by the end of 2024. That's almost quadruple the current price, of course, as increasingly cash-rich miners reduce sales of the token. Stan Chart says increased miner profitability per Bitcoin mined means that they can sell fewer Bitcoins while maintaining cash inflows, reducing net Bitcoin supply and pushing the price of Bitcoin up. Elise Keenan of Stillmark told us last week that the fact that big players like Fidelity and BlackRock are confident enough to apply for a Bitcoin ETF shows its value. Here's her rationale. Bitcoin's uptime is unparalleled. It's at something like 99.999%. Um, there's been no breach at the protocol level in over well over a decade, and it's reliable. And what that means is that the hard rules, the important rules that define the protocol and people's expectations of it haven't changed and can't change by a unilateral movement of a single individual or foundation or team. And so it, it actually can't happen. All right. Now, Tim Draper is the founder of Draper Associates, the early stage venture capital firm that has backed the likes of funded companies, including Tesla, Twitch, Robinhood and Coinbase. He's been a longtime supporter of Bitcoin, uh, as uh, as I, I think initially directed by his son, Adam. Tim, great to have you on the program with us. Um, thanks so much for joining us. Let's talk, first of all, about uh, the reason that you've had to move your target on Bitcoin back. Um, $250,000, you now say by 2025. What has been holding Bitcoin back, you think, the most? I wasn't, when I predicted it, Bitcoin was at 4,000, so it's gone to 30,000 in that time. Um, and I wasn't really expecting um, the US bureaucracy to be um, this aggressive. And I thought that maybe they would be recognizing that they've got to compete with the rest of the world. They've got to um, provide a platform from which uh, entrepreneurs can, can flourish. And by having this um, the regulation by enforcement that the SEC has been uh, professing and driving, uh, it's really driving all the great entrepreneurs out. And I think that that, is, that has hurt um, the Bitcoin price, but, but Bitcoin is here to stay. It's a, great, um, it's a great system of, it's a great currency. It's a great 
way to operate. I can't wait until I can raise a fund all in Bitcoin, invest it all in Bitcoin, have my, my portfolio companies all pay their employees and suppliers all in Bitcoin, and have taxes all paid in Bitcoin and have the waterfall all fall into people's <laughs> Bitcoin wallets. Because then there's no accounting, there's no auditing, there's no bookkeeping. It's all done on the blockchain and it's all honest and it's all straight. And I think that that is going to be, that's going to bring society to an anthropological leap forward. It's going to be an amazing time and I can't wait for it. How and I you... guess I thought that it was going to happen a little sooner than it did. I also thought retailers would recognize that they can save 2% by uh, accepting Bitcoin, and I thought they'd recognize that sooner, um, but that hasn't happened yet. And I think it's going to happen about the right time, about the same time as the happening, and maybe we'll get my price target then. Tim, a lot of uh, you know, a lot of the OG Bitcoiners have sort of given up on the transactional piece of it, on the currency uh, side of it, looking at it more as a store of wealth, like uh, digital gold. Why are you still um, pushing that, uh, that use case? And how would it work? Would you use the Lightning Network or some other uh, software patch to make it faster and more efficient? Yeah, I think when people talk about using Bitcoin as a store of value and that, that being the only use, um, what they're missing is that um, the Lightning Network can operate off chain. So all these people who talk about Bitcoin using too much energy or it's too slow or whatever, um, they're missing that um, when you move it off to the Lightning Network um, and maybe with Open Node or whatever, it can do 5,000 transactions a second and it doesn't require a lot of energy. And, uh, and I think that as... Um, the software starts being built for the smart contracts on Bitcoin. Uh, when ETFs are, are more targeted toward Bitcoin, they're calling, calling them ordinals. Um, not ETFs, sorry. NFTs. <laughs> ETFs are what, what A lot the of acronyms. Fidelity and BlackRock guys are going to be doing. Um, but the NFTs, once the NFTs or ordinals um, become a part of Bitcoin, um, and when um, when DAOs start focusing around Bitcoin, I think you're going to start seeing um, the real flourishing of Bitcoin. And uh, mm -hmm. and I think FTX sent us a very strong message that we don't want centralized currencies of any kind. And we don't want I mean, we don't want a central bank. We don't want centralized currencies of any kind because they can be controlled by one person. And that one person can take us off a cliff. Yeah, Tim, there were obviously a lot of lessons learned by FTX, and many venture capitalists were burned uh, by the implosion of Sam Bankman Fried's once empire. VCs yeah, are still seemingly that. a little bit more reluctant. You avoided, avoided it, but not everybody did. Like and as a result, well, that you probably benefited from that. But when we think about the VC community more largely and their reluctance to invest in this space, do you think that's that's changing? What would it take for the funding to come back? Oh, I think the funding is happening. And what's great about what the entrepreneurs that are working on things right now is um, that we call what we call the entrepreneurial tourists have left. And now uh, it's the true entrepreneurs that are working on um, building out the Bitcoin ecosystem, building out a, um, new forms of smart contracts, new ordinals, new all sorts of new applications. And, and they are the ones who are so dedicated to it. They don't care if a venture capitalist comes in or not. They're going to do it. And I think that those are the best. I, uh, venture capitalists have been um, uh, really whipsawed by the by the bear market, and that has mm -hmm. really hurt the late stage venture capitalists. And they um, and they are uh, really licking their wounds, and they're they're not going to be investing anytime soon. But the um, but where we are in the early stage venture capital business, it's, um, 
it's really an exciting time because the entrepreneurs are are true entrepreneurs willing to do whatever it takes to make these things successful. And they are moving that ball along very quickly. So I I suspect that in the next year or two, uh, you're going to see some really great changes and some really good improvements in user the user experience, the user interfaces, the uh, ability for a retailer to take Bitcoin, uh, the ability to trade in and out of Bitcoin, uh, all those things are going to be much easier. So you were talking about how you stayed away from FTX and Sam Bankman Freed in particular, but you are invested in other exchanges that are also now under uh, regulatory scrutiny. Binance, for example, as we were talking about in, in our open, Gemini, I'm not an uh, now in under Binance. some. Sorry, okay, I'm an well, investor you... in Coinbase. And Gemini. I'm an investor okay, well, Coinbase in Coinbase too, and Gemini. And I'm an investor in Gemini. Yeah. Thank you and both for of the them correction. Have gone but Coinbase. Exactly according to the rules, they have done everything right. And I have no idea why the SEC would try to go after two groups that are doing everything they can to comply with all the ridiculous regulations that these guys are putting together. And somehow the SEC decides to slap slap them down. I think we need a new yeah. way of thinking at the SEC. This is not has the SEC contacted America. you about this, Tim? Do regulators have questions no. for you in particular? No, but the but I think they have a problem, and I think it it is that they tried to make all of crypto securities or exchanges because. They're called the SE, the Securities and Exchange Commission. So everything they see is either a security or an exchange. Crypto is not like that. It's a different thing. It's a different animal. And the U.S. has just been very, very slow to figure it out, to regulate it, and to set the right uh, rules and, and structures so that we can continue to innovate. Tim, do you uh, think Tim, Tim the US has been the center of innovation for all these years and all of a sudden we're losing it. We're losing it to all these countries who are a little bit more fleet of foot and they're coming and they're saying, "Hey, <clears throat> bring your bring your uh, your Bitcoin company to our country. We don't have all those uh, ridiculous regulations that are 80 something years old, 83 years old." We have we have a new set of regulations. They've all been set up for crypto. We know what the rules are, and here they are. And if you're an entrepreneur, this is the way you can play. Tim, um, in the U.S., you don't know how to play. Can I just can I just ask mm -hmm. when you're investing in in uh, companies, are you looking solely at Bitcoin, or are you also investing in <clears throat> uh, in other uh, coins? And are you looking for companies that want to operate in the U.S., or are you happy to invest in companies that are going to go to friendlier shores? We buy into entrepreneurs. We invest in entrepreneurs. And those entrepreneurs can be doing a wide variety of different things. And those entrepreneurs can come from anywhere in the world. Uh, it used to be that they would come to the Silicon Valley from anywhere in the world, but the US is killing the golden goose. They are destroying the Silicon Valley by, by putting these, slapping the, this fear on everybody who's starting a business. I've never, I've never seen so many situations where entrepreneurs come to me and they say, well, this is what we intended to do, but the regulatory situation is that we, we have to do this. Entrepreneurs are, shouldn't be regulated at that level. They're just getting going. They need to start something. They need to try something new. And uh, the regulators shouldn't be in their face. It's... Um, the regulators have got a job. They set regulations and then let the world operate under those regulations. Uh, it, it isn't working in the U.S. We're in a competitive environment. We're losing out to Switzerland and Japan and Malta and um, Estonia. We're losing out to all these countries, Singapore. That, are, that have laid down very clear regulations. They know exactly what they're allowed to do. And the entrepreneurs are all going to those countries instead of going to the US. And that hurts. Right. Um, boy, particularly to a guy like me who grew up in the Silicon Valley.
Um, but I have to understand as a venture capitalist, it's a global Silicon Valley now. And if a country, if our country is, is regulating by enforcement, um, we might as well be North Korea. Well, I, I, I can understand why regulators would be concerned when you see so many collapses and uh, investors out money. Look at um, what happened at Genesis. You know, Gemini now, as you're well aware, um, suing Barry Silbert's DCG. Uh, how should that be worked out, Tim? And, and have you talked to Barry Silbert about this? I haven't, no. Um, and I think that, um, yeah, that is a dispute between two companies, and we have a very clear way of doing that. Uh, there's no reason the regulators should have gotten involved. Um, you know, and, and if they did, they should have just laid down some new regulations just for crypto. Would have worked out. Everyone would have known exactly how they're supposed to play the game. Um, the reason we avoided FTX, the reason we avoided Black BlockFi was that they were centralized. We don't want a centralized currency. We have one. The dollar is a centralized currency. The Argentinian peso, the Nigerian naira. They are all they are all centralized currencies, and and I'll tell you the Nigerians are very happy that Bitcoin is an alternative, and the Argentinians are very happy that Bitcoin is an alternative for them. And, and Tim, the you, US, own, you own a lot of Bitcoin, had too right? Much inflation. Do, do you own other and, coins besides Bitcoin? Yes, yes, yes. Those, um, those that fail the test. Entrepreneurs of all types, and many of them have done ICOs and. Uh, uh, but we don't. I don't buy a bunch of coins. I don't buy a bunch of tokens, um, except Bitcoin. Right. And uh, but I do invest in entrepreneurs that then issue tokens, and tokens are for a lot of different purposes. And and there's so much creativity going around, on around the the um, cryptocurrency and tokenizing space uh, that uh, it's it's a great area for really creative entrepreneurs to participate. All right, Tim. And I just hope that the U.S. starts to see the light and realizes that um, we're all better off if we have very clear regulations, ideally light touch, uh, and then we can all participate. Uh, otherwise, people will be afraid to operate in the U.S. And we're going to miss this 40-year run that is going to be a, a Bitcoin run. It's we're going to see the next the the countries that that um, adapt and create clear rules and regulations around uh, Bitcoin today are going to be the big winners of tomorrow. It'll Got be it. like the equivalent of what Singapore was able to do seventy years ago, or South Korea. They they laid down the rules and they said, "Go get them." We are a free country and we're going to let things run Got it. free. We trust you. We're going to set you free. All right, Tim, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate your time. Tim Draper, uh, a venture capitalist and Bitcoin investor and investor, of course, in entrepreneurs. Coming up, the Winklevoss brothers will talk about their accusations uh, at DCG and its CEO, Barry Silbert. Fraud and deception is what they're saying, stemming from a failed lending venture uh, with their firm, Gemini. And to access all of the latest data and news on crypto, check out CRYP Go on the terminal. This is Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg Crypto. I'm Kaylee Lines in Washington with Matt Miller in New York. Last week, Kaylee, Gemini Trust, the crypto exchange founded by the Winklevoss twins, filed a lawsuit against DCD, the digital currency group, and its CEO, Barry Silbert. Gemini is hoping to recover hundreds of millions of dollars in frozen funds related to a now bankrupt DCG subsidiary called Genesis Global. Bloomberg Shanali Vasic joins us with more. So it's official. It's official. We have seen just a couple of days ago also one of the Winklevoss twins come out with an open letter 
on Twitter, as we've seen kind of happen all summer and throughout the last, you know, several months or so, really accusing Barry Silbert of acting in bad faith. Now, what does the lawsuit say? They are alleging now, and this is uh, the Gemini Trust Company against Digital Currency Group, as you said, and Barry Silbert. They are alleging fraud. They are seeking damages, and they are saying that DCG and Barry Silbert made false and misleading statements and incomplete representations when it came to the subsidiary Genesis's work with Gemini Trust. Now, remember, this is separate from the bankruptcy proceeding in which Gemini is also seeking claims of more than a billion dollars, $1.2 billion for hundreds of thousands of people who had put their money with Gemini and, in fact, had worked with Genesis as well. Shanali, what are the prospects of victory here? for the Winklevoss brothers? Yeah, and I should say, I should read the statement that we had gotten from DCG, which is um, calling this lawsuit a publicity stunt and saying that any suggestion of wrongdoing by DCG or any of its employees is baseless, defamatory, and completely false. Separately, we have Bloomberg Intelligence weighing in here about whether this suit has merit, and it's not about the merit necessarily, it's about the bankruptcy that Genesis is facing as well, because this new legal battle smashes into that at this point. And there are bankruptcy rules, stay in which could prevent them to be successful in recouping anything, damages, for this separate lawsuit in New York courts. All right. Great breakdown. Thank you so much, Shanali Vasek of Bloomberg. We'll have more Bloomberg Crypto coming up. This is Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg Crypto. I'm Kaylee Lines in Washington with Matt Miller in New York. Now to some crypto stories that caught our attention this week, including odds of a spot Bitcoin ETF winning approval in the U.S. are about 50-50, according to Bloomberg Intelligence. Our ETF analyst, James Seifert, be believes the ARC 21 shares application to the CBOE has the best chance of approval, with the BlackRock NASDAQ filing a close second. He says that while the SEC denied the Bitcoin ETF proposals we've seen for years, its recent call for more details signals a greater willingness to engage with applicants. And a Moroccan man has been charged with stealing nearly half a million dollars worth of crypto and NFTs through a replica of the OpenSea website. The U.S. charged the 25-year-old for tricking people to give info that he used to steal their assets, which included two Bored Apes NFTs he could face 20 years in prison. Coming up next week, Sergey Nazarov joins us from Chainlink. For Kaylee Lines and myself, this is Bloomberg.